Hola, hi Michael. Hi. Uh, today we're going to, uh, the topic for today is uh, the question uh, says, is self-investigation at Mavichara uh, an investigation of ego or investigation of our real nature? Right. Um, this is a, a question that is, that often is raised by people. Um, just recently there was a lot of discussion about this on my blog. And I, the latest article on my blog is de devoted to this subject, but I thought it would be a useful topic to uh, talk about here because it's such a, understanding this correctly is so fundamental to understanding what self-investigation is all about. Um, there are some people who read uh, Bhagavan's teachings and there are times when Bhagavan says, you must investigate ego. And sometimes people even used to ask Bhagavan, Bhagavan, when you, when you say self-investigation, what is the self we have to investigate? Is it ego or is it the real self? Or whatever they call it. Uh, the term Bhagavan used for real self is Atma Swarupa, which means our real nature. But they, people would ask, is it, is it the ego or is it the real self? When people ask like that, Bhagavan generally said, it is ego. There's a reason why he said that. Supposing you're, you're walking on a path in twilight with Bhagavan, and ahead of you on the path, there's something lying there. You think it's a, a snake, so you're afraid. Bhagavan will reassure you, no, it's not a snake, it's only a, a rope. Um, and you hesitate, and you say, uh, you're afraid. But when they say, look at it carefully and you'll see it's just a, a rope. Then if you ask Bhagavan, which it should I look at? Should I look at the snoke or should I look at the rope? He knows you're, 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 you're still thinking it's a snake. So he said, look at the snake. If you look at the snake, what do you see? You see it's a rope. Likewise, for people who didn't understand that, but there is only one self. But, but, but our real nature and ego are not two, two different things. He, for those, such people, he said, investigate ego, that is sufficient. Forget about the real self, just investigate ego. Because if you investigate ego, you see pure awareness. Pure awareness is our real nature. Bhagavan often, in spite of Bhagavan often saying, but we are one, not two. People still think in dualistic terms as the self and ego. Higher self, lower self. Real self, unreal self. As if there are two selves. How many selves are we? But one said, it's the experience of everyone. We are one. Then does that mean ego is our real nature? In a sense, yes. Does it mean our real nature is ego? No. Just like the snake is only a rope, but the rope is not a snake. In substance, they are one and the same thing. In appearance, they are different. So the difference between ego and our real nature is only a difference in appearance. Why does ego appear different to our real nature? Because our real nature is pure awareness. Pure awareness means awareness that is not contaminated, even to the slightest extent, by any awareness of anything other than ourself. Awareness of anything other than ourself is unreal. Why? Because what actually exists is only ourself, is only pure awareness. So if we're aware of anything other than ourself, that is ignorance. That's why Bowen says in verse 13, he says in several places, but in verse 13, of Udinap, he says it in a particular way, nana vam jnanam ajnanam. I mean, awareness of many is ignorance. Because there is, what actually exists is ekam eva advitiam, one only without a second. That one only without a second is pure awareness. That is what we actually are. When we rise as ego, we are not aware of us as ego we are not aware of ourselves as pure awareness because we're aware of ourselves as, i am this person i am this body so in this the ego is nothing but this 
conflated awareness, I am this, this mixed awareness, I am this body. In that mixed awareness, what is real is only I am. That is pure awareness. That's our fundamental awareness of our own existence. That is, we, there is never a moment when we are not aware of ourselves. What we, 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 but we are, we, we are always aware that the pure awareness is always shining within us, but it seems to be something else because we confuse it with the, the awareness of a body, we mix the two together and we say, I am this body. We, 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 our experience is, I am this body. And as soon as we're aware of ourselves as a body, we become aware of other things. The awareness of other things, in verse 4 of Uludan Aftu, Bhagavan says, Uruvam um, Tanayin, um, Uruhu Paramatran. That is, if one's self is a form, the world and God will be likewise. That, that means f forms, phenomena, appear only when we mistake ourself to be a form, the form of this body. So when we experience ourselves as this form, world and God also seem to be forms. Because we've limited ourselves, so world seems to be so many forms, and God is not this person, he's not this world, God is something else, so we've got some idea. But we, because we take ourselves to be a form, we may say, oh, God is formless. In philosophy, it is said God is formless. But we cannot, even the idea of a formless God is itself a form. Because every thought is a form. So we can't know the formless God without knowing our own formless nature. God is actually what we actually what we really are. But when we limit ourselves as this person, if I am Michael, then I'm not God. Because Michael is not God. But the I am in the I am in I am Michael, that I am is God. So it's a, it's a, the, the distinction between our real nature and ego is a subtle distinction. Pure awareness without adjuncts is our real nature. Pure awareness mixed with adjuncts, conflated with adjuncts, is ego. So it's the same pure awareness in both cases. There is only one awareness. That one awareness is never aware of anything other than itself. But when, from the perspective of ego, that one awareness seems to be, it seems to be me, this little, this little ego, and so there seem to be so many other things, and it's all, everything comes back to ego. According to Bhagavan, the root of all problems is ego. But the thing about ego, ego is both the cause of our bondage, and it's also the doorway to liberation. But in the ego, the ego consists of a real part, or a real aspect and an unreal aspect. It doesn't consist of parts. Ego is one of whole. But an aspect, one aspect of it is I am, which is pure awareness. The other aspect of it is this body, which is, um, which is unreal. So if we want to know what we actually are, we have to hold on to I am. That is to the real aspect, to the real element in ego. So when we are holding on to I am, we are holding on to our real nature. So self-investigation just like if you look carefully in order to to find out what the snake really is you have to look at it carefully when you look at it carefully you see it's just a rope likewise in order to find out who am i now i seem to be this ego but is this what i really am i have to look at myself when i look at this eye if i look at it closely enough carefully enough in other words if i attend to it so keenly that i cease to be aware of anything else I'll be aware only of myself. So I will then see myself as pure awareness. As soon as I recognize that I'm just pure awareness, ego is finished. So it, it doesn't, Atma Bichara, is that Atma in Atma Bichara? Is it ego or our real nature? But it's only one Atma. <laughs> Investigate the one Atma. Call it ego, call it our real nature. So call it whatever you want, Will. Investigate yourself. Atma means oneself. So what do you say? Uh -huh. We could use the, the analogy of the mirage in the desert, for example. Uh, like if you see a mirage, for example, you see water and oasis yeah. in the of the desert, and there's nothing there, it's just sand, and yes. Yes. So, but you still see the, the water and so on. Yeah, there are many, many different analogies are used. Um, 
mirage analogy is useful in some contexts, but in the context of self-investigation, the analogy that is most useful is this snake and rope one. Because snake and rope are one and the same thing. Yeah, that's true. The, yeah. the, the snake is nothing but a false appearance. It's a misperception of a rope. If you look at it carefully enough, you'll see it's a rope. Likewise, if we look at ourselves carefully enough, you will see that we're pure awareness. One thing that I found very, very useful, a description that I found in one of your articles, I think it's uh, the one where you, uh, metaphysical solipsism, I think, in yes. the blog. I think you say there that uh, the, the false, the, the user is snake, uh, I'm not paraphrasing, but uh, something of the sort you say there, that uh, the user is snake doesn't exist independent of the ego that observes the, the snake, because it doesn't. The snake doesn't ex exist independent of the yes. of the ego of the observer. There is only a rope there, yes, yes, so yes. to speak. No? But uh, so, but doing the Atma Vichara, or we see the snake, we have to look at the snake. Yeah, we have to look at the snake in order to see that it's just a rope. It's a rope. Likewise, we have to look at ego in order to see that it's our real nature. But when we're looking at ego, what are we actually looking at? We're looking at our real nature. That's why Bhagavan said. In, 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 there's a nice passage in uh, Mahasha's Gospel when Bhagavan, someone's questioning Bhagavan about it. Bhagavan said, the nature of ego is chit jadagranti. Chit means the pure awareness, jada means the, uh, what is not aware, that's the body. These two, when they mix together, this is chit jadagranti. When we investigate ego, we are, what we are investigating, we don't look at this body to investigate ourselves. I mean, that's why we have a preliminary, we first have to understand that we are not this body, we are not this mind. That's why the neti neti um, uh, analysis is necessary to start with. Because if, if, if I take myself to be this body, then I can investigate myself by sitting in front of a mirror and looking at myself. <laughs> so that, that is not, that is not at my vichara. We first need to understand that we are not this body not this mind, we are not anything, we are just that, we are the sakshi, the witness, we are that which is aware of all these, we are not anything that is perceived, we are the perceiver. Then once we've understood that, to investigate ourselves, what do we have to do? We have to attend to the perceiver. The perceiver is ego, but the perceiving portion of ego is the I am portion, not the body. Body is jada, body is not aware of anything. It's only ego that is aware. So we attend to the awareness aspect of ego, and thereby every, all the non-awareness aspects drop off. But drop off means in the sense that the more we focus our attention on one thing, the more we cease to be, uh, attend to anything else. If you're reading a very interesting book or watching a very interesting film, there may be a lot of noise going on outside. There may be a festival going on, or there may be a a fight going on in the street or whatever, whatever. Uh, police cars may be going by with their siren. You won't notice all that because you're so interested in your book or the film. Likewise, the more we are interested in attending only to ourselves, the more other things we, uh, we draw into the background of our awareness. Until when we focus our entire attention 100% on ourselves, or to put it another way, when we turn our attention 180 degrees away from what is seen to what is seeing, away from the, what is perceived to the perceiver, when we turn 180 degrees, we then cease to be aware of anything other than ourself. And when we cease to be aware of anything other than ourself, that is pure awareness. So when people- we aware of ourselves with pure awareness, ego is finished. So when people say, for example, that they uh, they say, okay, so I turn I turn within and I ask the question, for example, if it's so yes. some help, I turn within, I see nothing. There is an emptiness, there is darkness, there is <laughs> there is nothing. There is some voice, uh, <laughs> the, the chatter of the of the mind, but th there is nothing. So it, it has to be like that because there is still some clinging to the world, to the yes. phenomenon, in a way that is unconsciously we are holding on to that. So yes. even though we turn within. There is yeah. some mechanism that... Yes. Mm. Anyone who says, I'm aware only of nothing, is, has not understood properly. 
we are not a thing in the sense that we are not a phenomenon. We are not an object. So we can't find any object within us and say, oh, this is me. But we are there as the awareness. So even to be aware of, of nothing, we must be there. In sleep, for example, we're aware of nothing. But we are aware. We are aware of being aware of nothing. Because when we wake up, we say, oh, I slept peacefully. I, didn't nothing. I had no dreams. I was very, very peaceful sleep. I wasn't aware of anything. Another kind of sort of belief or something, or that you have, you just sort of have to find something, or some, even though some a life emptiness or some some sort of thing that is not the usual phenomenon or experience that we found we find outside. Sleep, sleep is a very good guide to practicing self investigation correctly, but we have to understand sleep. The the, the usual um understanding of sleep because we take awareness to be awareness of things since we're not aware of anything in sleep people generally say oh sleep is a state of unconsciousness there's no awareness in sleep but how do you know that you're not aware of anything in sleep because you're aware you know you were in a state in which you were not aware of anything so there is awareness there that what the awareness in sleep is pure awareness it's not awareness of anything so that is our real nature that is what we are trying to experience here and now in the waking state. So it is nothing in the sense that there's no phenomena. But in order to be aware of the absence of phenomena, you must be aware. So we are always there. So a good advice, a good advice would be like, don't expect anything to find, to find anything. No, we, we're not, we're not, we're don't look for anything. Or we're not looking for anything. We're looking for ourselves, and we ourselves are not a thing. It's, it's, uh, it's, we, 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 our understanding has to be a very subtle understanding. If we don't understand this correctly, we'll be stumbling around. I mean, it's, it, it's worth, even if we've not understood it correctly, it's worth trying this self-investigation. Because the more we try, the more clarity we'll get and the better we'll understand it. But not understanding this can lead you to, I mean, it could be really misleading it, it get you to a, uh... A dead end and, and be there stuck for. Why reading Bhagavan's teachings often helps us to uh, avoid concluding, oh, it's nothing, it's, um, it's a dead end. Some people say, I turn with him and nothing happens. What do I do next? <laughs> you don't do anything. Sumayaru, keep, be still, just be. What, what we are looking for, every phenomena, ph phenomena are things that appear and disappear. There's a, a word in Sanskrit, they are visesha. Visesha means what is, it's, there's no exact word in English for it, but visesha means we can explain it, not translate it, we can explain it. Visesha means what has features. Every object, every phenomenon has certain features. Uh, whether it's a thought or a feeling or a perception or they've all got certain features. Our awareness has no, pure awareness has no features. It's near visatia. So we, sleep is a near visatia state. There's no features in sleep. Okay, when we come back, we say, when we try to, when we try to think about sleep, we think, oh, it was a dark state. Why we think of it as a dark state? Because we weren't aware of anything there. And also, we are not, we were aware in sleep, but we are not, and we, now we know we were aware in sleep because we know we were in a state in which we were not aware of anything. So, but our, our memory of what we were aware of in sleep is, is a clouded memory because what we were aware of in sleep is what we actually are even here and now. But since we are now not aware of ourselves as we actually are, we cannot remember what we experienced in sleep. So we we don't we so to us we we can recognize that we were aware in sleep because we we clearly remember having been in a state in which we weren't aware of anything. But what is that experience of being aware of of just being aware without being aware of anything? We have no clear 
memory of that. If we want to know what we experienced in sleep clearly, try to attend to ourselves. We should attend to ourselves here and now. The more we attend to ourselves, the more other phenomena all withdrawing to the background, and the closer we come to the pure awareness that we experienced in sleep. That's very useful to think of sleep in a way to help us to yeah, yeah, get yeah. that sense or that <coughs> sense of uh, what the practice might be like. Or as long as we are aware of anything we were not aware of in sleep, that is a phenomenon. But our basic experience, our fundamental experience, is what we experience in sleep. That is the experience of pure awareness. <clears throat> but one sometimes used to distinguish. Um, Pure awareness, no, for awareness of things, he had a term in Tamil, he called it sutarivu. Sutarivu, sutu means uh, pointing or showing. So the, the uh, awareness that shows things, but phenomena, that he calls sutarivu. And the pure awareness he calls sutatrarivu. That means awareness without any point, without any showing. So our real nature is sutat, sutatrarivu. That's a pure awareness. In waking and dream, we rise as ego. Ego is sutarivu. It's an awareness that is all, as ego, we are always aware of things other than ourselves. We're always aware of phenomena. The first phenomena we're aware of is this body, which seems to be ourself. And we're aware of other phenomena. So the very nature of ego is always to be aware of phenomena. Whereas the very nature of, whereas our real nature, is pure awareness, which is never aware of any phenomenon. So, as, so long as we are even aware of any phenomenon, even to the slightest extent, we are existing there as ego. Only when we're aware of nothing other than ourselves, when we're aware only of awareness, pure awareness, that is the state where ego is absent. That is where ego gets, that's how ego gets destroyed by self investigation. Mm -hmm. So, we okay. need. To, attend to ourselves more and more keenly so that other things recede into the background. But we won't even notice them receding into the background because uh, 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 the key is interest. Why people say, oh, thoughts keep on coming when I'm trying to attend to myself? Because we're interested in other things. We need to cultivate interest only in knowing ourselves. The more interested we are in knowing ourselves, the less we'll be, let thoughts come or go. What the, I, I'm not here to think about thoughts. I'm not here to bother whether thoughts come or go. If we are so interested in attending to ourselves, no thoughts will arise because thoughts cannot arise without our attending to them. Thoughts exist only in our perception. So only if we attend to them, they arise. If we, if we deny our attention to them because we are so interested in attending to ourselves, the thought will rise and subside immediately because there'll be no there'll be no one there to attempt to welcome it. We welcome the thoughts, and we we follow them and we happily dance around with our thoughts throughout the waking and dream state. We are hypnotized by them <laughs> in a way. Well, we hypnotize ourselves. Ourselves, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> 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 we, are, <laughs> we ourselves are thinking them. <laughs> <laughs> 